Welcome to Secrets of Near Field Monitoring for AES 2020. My name is Mike Rodriguez, and I'm the host of the Audio Nowcast Pro Audio Podcast, and I'll be moderating this discussion with Mr. Carl Tatz. And today, we're going to learn some secrets of near field monitoring. So, Carl, why don't you just take it away? I will do that. Uh, thank you, Michael, and thank you to everyone taking the time to view this presentation. Uh, first off, uh, just to get going here, I'd like to uh, quickly explain what we'll be talking about. Uh, along with our studio designs across the country, we install our phantom focus monitoring system in each one. Uh, the hardware includes a digital processor, two subwoofers, speaker stands, and uh, the monitors of your choice. It's a two-day on-site laser-assisted installation procedure and renders a powerful monitoring tool for your audio, or for you, the audio professional. Uh, that said, we will be touching on that a little bit during the presentation, but more importantly, we'll be sharing some of the protocols and discoveries from the Phantom Focus playbook that if you take the time to implement, you'll, be, you'll find them very valuable, providing a giant step up for your monitoring. And at the end of the talk, you will also have a better understanding of what's happening right now in your room. Okay, this is the null positioning ensemble. This is the first thing I want to share with you. Uh, this is available on Carl Tatt's design website in the library section under acoustic tools. You can just print this out. Uh, this is incredibly valuable. Um, it's part of, it's what we do in the Phantom Focus system. And it's, it's very simple. It's almost dumb. Uh, and it, someone can take a look at it and say, just say, well, yeah, I kind of do that. But you're probably not. Um, I'll just go, it, it really requires no explanation, so I'll uh, proceed to explain what it is. <laughs> yeah, green, it looks pretty straightforward. Yeah, the green line is the console. We use a 3060 triangle, uh, 67 and a half inches from tweeter to tweeter. There's no magic in 67 and a half inches, you know, can I use 68 or 69 or something? Yes, you can. But I wouldn't get it much narrower than that. We stick with 67 and a half. <clears throat> because we like it, it works, and mainly it's consistent on all the systems across the country uh, to give a, uh, a very uh, similar experience to the listener. Okay, so you can see that triangle. The key here is to get the apex of that triangle in front of the console 18 inches, okay? So you actually have like a mini triangle there, and that's where your head is. Your head is ends up being about six inches from the front of the console. Obviously, you're not going to be in a vice. You're going to move around like anyone would. But this, that's a general concept. That's that's where you know we actually measure the monitors from there. But uh, it's a great listening position. Uh, you want the tweeters to be at ear height. Don't have the, if they're high. You need to tilt them down. Uh, some speaker manufacturers will say that uh, the dispersion on their tweeters is. Uh, easily capable of, of uh, dealing with that, but it's just not the same as having them at ear height. Uh, it's, it's very obvious, you probably noticed that yourself. Uh, if you're in a situation where meters, on, or, or excuse me, uh, uh, the speakers are on a meter bridge and the tweeter shooting over your head, when you raise up out of the seat and get at ear level, you can see it's a completely different story. So whatever it takes, I, I, obviously I, I, it just, I mix it studios like that, where, where yeah. you you sit at the console and the meter bridge is high, yeah. and then they're they're not even angled down; they're just firing above your head. Yeah. And you, well, and, and, you have, and eventually and you have to stand up. <laughs> right, and eventually you would learn to do that. You know, uh, you can learn to mix in an empty swimming pool, uh, <clears throat> but ideally, uh, you rather not go to those lengths. So make sure the tweeters are at your height. Uh, get your angles and. Um, uh, let's see, I think pretty much everything is clear here. What you're going to experience is you're going to experience the monitors disappearing. Uh, uh, you won't, you, it'll seem like you're listening to the music and not the monitors. As soon as you step outside of that apex, then it'll be apparent that you're listening to the speakers. So that's a little bit of the magic that happens when you do this. So that's I get brilliant. I got some photographs. Um, my assistant doing this and can show you how you do this. Uh, hopefully this will help. What's great about that previous graph is it literally shows you where you need to place your monitors. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. And yeah, what I tell 
people to do is don't kind of do it, do it exactly because that's where the magic is. So you can see, you take a um, strip of tape, console tape or what have you, and run it across the front of the monitors like that and get yourself a 60, 30 degree uh, triangle. Uh, you can get it at Office Depot. We use these metal ones that we get at the architectural places. Um, but that's a general idea. Let me show, I got a couple more pictures that'll show you uh, even more clearly uh, what we're talking about. You know, so, it makes you wonder if you go to those music stores where they have the wall of monitors that you're supposed to audition. <laughs> yeah, and they're all that, different heights. That's a, that's a and they're all, you know, different widths. That, that to me is like, okay, I bet you the one in the right position is going to sound the best. Yeah, it's, it's a tough thing to do. Okay, let's see. All right. Uh, so you can see in this picture how he's holding the triangle uh, with the tape. And I've got an even better picture where I can show you. So here's a close up of the triangle. Um, you can see there's a little gap between the tape and the triangle. You, you shoot for like 16th to an eighth an inch, no more than that. <clears throat> and that's where, that's how you'll have your angle. Now, that said, you're not gonna do this in 20 minutes. It's, it's tedious, I promise you. It takes us an entire day. We use a, a laser quad system, um, but you can get it using a tape measure. Make sure you, your speakers are the same distance from the front wall, uh, you know, obvious things. And, and it's a seesaw thing. When you change the angle on one side, that's gonna change the distance. You're gonna lose your 67 and a half inches. So you're gonna be seesawing between the 67 and a half inches and the 30 degrees there. Um, but eventually, you know, it might take an hour or so to get it exactly right. Uh, you know, get your height right and get that. But I can promise you it will be dramatic um, as far as your imaging is concerned. I guess if you're building a studio too, you could uh, do that all in CAD, you know, your CAD program and figure out how far you have to be off the wall and everything and then double check it. Um, with all the, the, the tools. Well, we'll get something tools. even better than that. And that's the next slide. Uh, and this is a uh, axle mode room calculator. So let, let me show you this. This is also on the website, Carl Tatz Design Library Acoustic Tools. This is an example. There is an active version of this that you can download and you just put the measurements of your, your room in here, height, width, oh, and length. Uh, these are based on rectangular rooms, so uh, you might have to do a little uh, fudging if it's not a shoebox, is what we call it. <clears throat> but that's what this is based on. If it, you know, if you have a room with splayed walls, you can still kind of use the, the length mode, um, but it won't quite be as uh, dead on as, as this can be. This so is brilliant. This is brilliant. Well, I love this calculator because it's so simple uh, and it's very visual. There's tons of these out there on the internet, but this is the best one I've ever seen um, uh, from one-on-one -on -one, uh, technical products. Uh, so let's just talk about the bottom here. We've got the, the length mode on the bottom, the uh, width mode in the, uh, the middle, and the top is the height modes. And people, I assume people know, know what modes are. If you have a room, you have modes, uh, and it's the way the uh, low frequencies react to the boundaries uh, based on the speed of sound. So what you want to do, these, are, these nulls here, that's definitely where you don't want to be. You want to be in between them. It'll give you more of a, a balance of um, <clears throat> the frequencies and, and the boosts. So we're typically, most rooms you're going to end up in this, this area here. Sometimes you might end up in this area. It depends on the size of your room, the smaller the room. If you have a smaller room, you might end up here, which is fine. But typically you'll end up here. And your speakers, again, you're going to be somewhat limited by the size of your room, but you know, you'll probably be inside that first uh, null. And even worst case scenario, even if it is in the null a bit, that's the fourth axle null, which is not as critical as, as the first, second, and third, which are a lot uh, deeper, but it depends. But if you had to make a trade-off between the two, well, I can get the speakers in in the right place, but uh, I can't get the listening position in the right place. Go to the listening position is more important. Um, and you can see 
you know, you can look at this example, it's, it's self-explanatory. Also, we just figured out between 56 inches and 83 inches is about 72 inches, give or take. Um, and that's where you want to, that's your tool for your null positioning ensemble. The, the uh, distance between the, the listening ears, which is six inches in front of the console, to the face of the, uh, the baffle of the speaker is 45 inches. Uh, you'll only need that when you're doing this, but it's called a null positioning ensemble for a reason. It's ensemble of the speakers, the console, and the listener, and they move back and forth ensemble. Uh, so just think of it as one thing, and you just want to get it placed there as well as you can. Uh, and those those the, the the inches refer to the distance from the wall, right? That's 24 inches from Correct. front wall, Correct. 72 inches from the yeah, front wall. Yeah, the front wall is indicated here. Yeah, front wall. Gotcha. Here. That's, that's amazing. That, t that tells you, you just enter in your room information and you yeah. know exactly where to go. That is that is pretty cool. Yeah, it's There's very no, cool. No, I no love guessing. this thing. Uh, and then let's go to the height mode here. If you have an eight-foot ceiling, you're going to be obviously in the worst place you can be, which is the middle of the room, the middle of the height of the room. Um, so the only thing you can do in that case is, this is the, a great argument to use, get a cloud uh, above the console in the listening position, and that will attenuate that dip, a double dip there, the first and third axle null there. Uh, this happens to be a nine foot room, so you're in pretty good shape, you're outside of that dip. Um, now, the width mode, you look at this picture and you know the most important thing in the control room is symmetry. So you want to be in the middle of the room. And the reason for symmetry is, you know, the you want the left speaker and the right speaker to see the same thing. If the, if the left speaker is, if there's a symmetry on one side, you're going to have a different frequency response from one speaker compared to the to the other side. Okay, but this still looks really bad because you you have to be in the center. So I'll tell you something about the phantom focus system. We always use uh, a pair of subwoofers and we locate them in the front corners. When you do that, the subwoofers actually become out of phase with one another at the first and third axle null. So this dip, double dip you see here, just comes up automatically, whoop, no EQ, that, nothing. That's so, cool, that's, that's pretty awesome. Uh, okay, but if you don't have that situation, what happens is the left speaker low end will react to the left corner, the right speaker low end will react to the right corner, and you will have some of that attenuation. It's not as dramatic, um, but it makes it a lot more usable. Otherwise, people would have had much bigger problems over the years. <clears throat> um, so uh, do this, get, get your general idea where you are, and then go to your, your no positioning ensemble, get that set up. Uh, <clears throat> and once you've got it, you want to experiment, because there's no way you know, th these things are based, these calculations are based on concrete bunkers, which nobody has, which is a very good thing. Uh, actually, uh, you know, drywall, you know, on the stud wall is a great, is the biggest base trap you're gonna have. Uh, <clears throat> so it's really to your advantage. Um, but still, there's gonna be a pocket. So what I, I suggest is once you get your null positioning ensemble set up, put some tape marks on the floor on each side of your stand, <clears throat> with some Sharpie marks, <clears throat> excuse me. And that way you'll have a track so you can move the, um, the, the speaker four, three inches, six inches back, you know, just try some different positions. And the reason I want you to put the tape on the floor is so that you don't have to start from scratch because you, you just put uh, a bunch of time into getting the null position ensemble set up. So when you move it, just do it as carefully as you can and listen. And you might say, whoa, you know, you, you just find a pocket and it's just great. Uh, or you might be fine where you started. Um, and wherever you move, you're gonna lose your 67 and a half inch. You're gonna lose your angle a little bit, but it's not like starting from scratch. So you'll have to tweak it at that point. <clears throat> but if you do this, these two things, the imaging in, of your monitors is gonna be better than you've ever imagined. <clears throat> uh, and also your frequency response will be helped by avoiding these nulls. Uh, That's great, because it just gives you a really good starting point when you're putting your studio together. Like, even before you start 
putting up all your your right. um, sound um, treatment, you you have to position the monitor, and that's a. Mm-hmm. I mean, right. it tells you exactly right. Yeah, that's a good point. So obviously, you have to have treatment. So I'll just talk about that very quickly. Uh, we can talk at great length about every one of these subjects. <laughs> but you but you want to get the first reflections uh, taken care of. So in other words, if you're sitting in the listening position. You want to have someone hold a mirror on the wall. You probably, many of you probably know about this trick. You have someone run a mirror across the uh, side wall, and wherever you see the speakers, that's where you want to put your uh, your absorption. Uh, my general philosophy for control room um, uh, treatment is to have the back totally dead, the ceiling dead. Uh, put some corner traps in the four corners, and then. You're catching your first reflections. Obviously, your first reflections are your cloud also. You just don't want anything to come back from you. If you clap your hands, you don't want to hear the room because anything that comes back from the room is going to mix with the direct sound from the speakers, and then you're going to have comb filtering. And like you have no treatment at all, you've experienced, you know, the the speakers, even though if they're at arm's length, they sound far away. So that's my general, uh, just take the the, uh, craziness out of the room. Take, Take the ambience out of the room. You know, this isn't a tracking room. This is a control room. Don't be afraid to err on the dead side and sure. don't get too excited about diffusion because it's not a big, in, in my opinion, it's not a big factor, positive factor. I will say that to each side of your your listening position, it's, and depending how small your room is, how, how narrow it is, it's good to have a little bit of reflection diffusion on that side, not totally dead. If it's, it's, if it's far enough away, it doesn't matter. Okay. All right. Moving right along. Let's see what else we can do. We're trying to keep this within a certain time period. So I apologize. This is fantastic. Uh, by by the way, oh, good. By the way, if you, um, if you, if anyone has any questions, you can find my contact information on Carl, Carl design.com or, uh, phantomfocus.com and you can get to either site from either site uh, just a click away there's a ton of information there um, and if you want to just contact me just uh, drop me an email and I'd be glad to uh, answer any questions you have okay so let's talk about what happens in a control room this is a, a big piece that no Magic. one talks about Magic yeah. happens. This is totally magic. Totally magic. <laughs> that's, where, um, that's, that's where it all happens. Okay. So let me get... What you're looking at is a frequency response of left and right speaker, uh, right being blue, left being uh, orange. Not that it matters in this case. Wow. Uh, this, this was actually at a... Uh, uh, this is actually at... Uh, well, I probably shouldn't mention where it is. Um, but it's at, <clears throat> at at a studio that we we mentioned we uh, won the tech award for, and this is a pair of uh, 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 let's see what were the barefoot uh, micro main twenty sevens. So uh, you can see from like one k out, it's incredibly smooth. Right, it's, it's really that smooth. But I'm going to take credit for it since I d- designed the room. Uh, it's not always that smooth, but it just worked out real well in this room. Um, but you can see this problem here, um, this huge dip. Um, for one thing, there's an asymmetricality because the room wasn't symmetrical. This, this was a showroom, okay? It was Vintage King in Nashville. There, now, now I've said it. Um, and, it, you know, it's a showroom. It's not a dedicated mix room per se. So there were double doors in the back on one side. So that's what happens when you lose symmetry. The low end changes. Uh, you know the upper frequencies don't, but the low end will change. So, so you that's can pretty it. drastic. Yeah, it's pretty drastic. And then there's a big hump here, etc., going out. But the point I want to make here is this dip that you see at approximately 125 hertz. This is something that happens in every room with every monitors. It doesn't mm. matter what room it is. It doesn't matter what monitors they are. They're all going to do this more or less. It might be. 15 dB like this, or it could be 10 dB, but it will always, always happen. If you think this isn't happening in your room, you're mistaken. Uh, in my lectures, I 
I show graphs like this of like 22 different rooms with different monitors and sometimes the same monitor in, in different rooms and they all show something you know, along these lines. So what is that? What happens with that? This is the main reason why everybody has a problem with the low end, why the low end is difficult, why you have to kind of learn your monitors and figure the whole thing out. Because if you boosted your the frequency here to get the, the bass to sound the way you wanted to, um, you know, you take it out to the car and it would be, you know, way too much. I'm sure everyone's had that experience. So you come back in, you say, oh, that sounds great. I better turn it down. So you have to ration yourself audio wise, uh, you know, part of learning your speakers, quote unquote. Uh, and then obviously you have a big hump here. Um, just in, in full disclosure, when you have a hump, at 60 hertz or a lower hump, you're going to hear the overtone, overtones of that uh, here, uh, or chances are you're going to hear them up here where the, where the hole is. But it's still not the same as filling this in. So we noticed this for years, and no one ever talked about it. Um, the speaker manufacturers don't want to, you know, talk about this much. And 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 if you have an auto tune uh, type of setup. You know, it's it's very you can't EQ that much. You can't EQ 10 dB without blowing your speakers, uh, unless you want to listen to 30 dB. So there's no real solution uh, for this. Uh, well, there is a solution. I'm going to tell you about it. Um, but finally, someone from uh, JL Audio, a friend of mine, sent me a uh, article from the Cambridge uh, Music Audiophile. I can't remember the name of the paper. I'm sorry. Um, I, every time I do one of these, I, I, I tell myself I'm going to call it up. But in it, uh, I actually got mentioned in the article because I had a, an article in uh, Sound on Sound about what we're talking about. And it, there was a, a gentleman in Cambridge, Massachusetts, who made this discovery, Roy Allison, uh, that when you put speakers on a stand, you know, uh, there's a floor bounce, there's a cancellation. Uh, the low frequency hits the floor and comes back up, and there's a cancellation. That's what you're looking at. Now, there are other boundary uh, areas that, that can contribute to this also. But it's primarily the floor. So all this time, and, and it's called the Allison effect. And all this, this time, I thought it was the Tats effect. Um, but it's the Allison effect. So I, I was relieved to know that I wasn't making this up. Um, so this is know that this is happening in, in your room. So let me show you, um, the only way you can fill this in is with subwoofers. So let me go to another picture here. Okay, you can see in this graph, we've added a subwoofer and that's what the pink line is. Um, but the subwoofer is, you know, the room is king and that's what's happening with the, with the subwoofer setup. So you gotta get dip there, you can, you can raise it up. Uh, it's, this room had a particular issue at that frequency. Hopefully you won't, um, but that's the only way. In other words, you could raise the level of the subwoofer right now and fill it in, but then you're going to have problems at 63 hertz, and sure, you know, it's it's not going to be a, a perfect solution. So you could move the subwoofer around, and and without analyzing uh, software, this is, it's impossible to do. So you're still going to ultimately you're going to end up. Uh, getting something that you, you're comfortable with and you like the sound of. Uh, I hate to say it. Um, uh, we, with, the, with the Phantom Focus system, we have the luxury, luxury of actually doing this completely correct. Uh, you know, you'll, if you use an auto-tune setup, this will definitely help you. You can do it with subwoofers. Uh, there's several out there. Uh, Genelec comes to mind that, that uh, probably, uh, probably does at least one of the best. Uh, uh, th their take on, on monitoring is is very good. They understand what's going on, but um, it's not quite you know what we do here. And let me show you. You know what's scary about this graph? Before you leave this graph, is the obviously the base, which looks completely out of control. But also, look at that that bump in two hundred and fifty, and then the dip between five hundred and one k. Yeah. I mean, that those are really critical critical frequencies especially 250 like that's just like snare drum that's like your beef on your snare drum you know what i mean so wow that's 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 just kind of scary <laughs> yeah and um 
you know, and obviously your your tendency is going to be to boost that and then to bring this down. You know, if yeah. this is, if this is what your monitors are doing, um, and again, you'll realize, oh, that's I take you take it someplace else and it's too loud. So then you gradually figure out what it is, um, and the general shape, which we're going to be talking about in the next slide, is. That, the shape of the frequency response is very important. So let me go to the next slide. Okay, so here's what happens in a phantom focus system. We have the ability to do something like this. You can see the subwoofer is still there, but it's, it's aligned with the frequency response. It's totally smooth, and I was talking about the shape. Uh, generally, it's about 60 B hot on the low end compared to the, to the high end. And that's uh, the Fletcher Munson curve, which your ear needs to hear more low end so it sounds as loud as the mid range. Uh, if you have, if you tune something flat, it's going to sound bass shy. Uh, most people don't talk about that. And, and this, this technology, I didn't invent any of this stuff. This technology has been around for a long time. Uh, so keep in mind if you have an auto tune thing, if you can raise it up in the, in the low end. Uh, somewhat, uh, you'll have a more accurate system. Now, let me show you something else here. That was incredible. And that's, and that's your phantom focus graph, right? Your phantom focus system? Right, yeah, that, that's the uh, tuned system. So take a look at this. Okay, so you can see the tuned system on the bottom. The top graph is the phase graph. And you can see from the uh, crossover right here on down and I, and I could go at great lengths in explaining what we you know more specifically what we do with the phantom focus system but that's not what we're doing here today uh, so starting at the crossover you can see that the right here you're looking at the left the right and the subwoofer they're perfectly in phase so that when you listen to a phantom focus system uh, something tuned, tuned like this the subwoofers are not localized. It never sounds like, well, let's shut the subwoofer off. What does it sound like with the subwoofer off? That never happens in a system like this. Uh, and the low end will sound like it's coming out of your five inch drivers. It'll sound wow. like 20 hertz is coming out of your five inch drivers. You never realize that they're over, in, the subwoofers are over in the corner or wherever. And, and it's pretty dramatic. So that, that's the goal. And this is where we really roll up our sleeves to make this happen. Uh, so between the null position, positioning ensemble, you can do right now, tonight, today, whatever, uh, this is going to be a little bit out of your reach. Um, but I think you can start to approximate it a bit with some of these auto-tune things or, or just think about it. The main thing I'm showing you this is I just want you to be aware that this is happening. Uh, case in, I mean, the reality is the greatest records in the world have not been mi mixed on fan fan phantom focus systems, although a lot of good ones have. So people learn it, talented people, you can do it. You can, uh, a get, good analogy is you can uh, drive across town in, uh, on a skateboard or you can drive across town in a Ferrari, your choice. You know, one's, one is probably going to be a better experience than the other, transportation-wise anyway. But you know what's so great about those graphs um, is that it's a great starting point because you can see what's happening. But then you also have a goal, like you have an attainable goal that you want to reach with your studio and how it sounds. And you're showing like, okay, this is the way it should be. So, you know, no matter what you use, you you have the goal of going there. So you're not shooting in the dark and you're not just relying on, on you know, someone's opinion. It's like you have like some science there to actually like set these parameters that you can then hopefully keep tweaking to achieve the maximum and that i think that's really great because i can't tell you you know especially starting out when they, you get a new pair of speakers and you're like okay we got to set them up and you hear that okay you need to be equal distance and all that but you never know why you just like that's what people said it is and, and right. you see that the graphs it's just amazing right well let me ask you a question michael you uh have actually experienced the phantom focus system maybe maybe you could talk about since you've actually heard you can see the graph you've actually heard that do you want to share that sure absolutely so um prior to going to uh meeting carl in the studio um carl's actually uh, a featured story on our web series um spaces when i went to nashville 
And we went to one of the studios that he designed, uh, which was a fabulous room. So many really great, innovative things. The Upper um, Deck. Yeah. Upper Deck Studio. And he uh, he sat me down and he did a mini version of what you just heard. <laughs> and I'm sitting there. And I'll be honest, I was a little skeptical. I was like, okay, I've heard. I mean, I've, I've been in this business a long time. I've heard tons of speakers i've heard tons and tons and tons of monitors and all kinds of stuff and and i sat there and he started the demo and let me tell you it was just mind-blowing and i don't get blown away by by audio things too often but it really was mind-blowing because the clarity and the depth and the fact that you really do lose you lose your speakers it's just coming from the the front wall it's just coming at you and the imaging was amazing that just the where everything was and we were listening to commercial music we were listening to you know michael jackson and and everything you know earth wind and fire all you know some great stuff some newer stuff too and just to be able to hear it and to be able to hear the um every little detail and it wasn't fatiguing and it to be honest it was it was relatively loud but not harsh and it was fun and i was i just wish i could just sit there and just play music over and over because you're basically rediscovering music i think at so one was, point i told you I, I i warned you by the way you're listening at 110 db <laughs> yeah yeah and it and, and it wasn't and it wasn't fatiguing because it was it was enjoyable and and i just it was pretty it was pretty inspiring. It really, really was. Like if I, I could sit I remember in front of that. Face, it, it was fun, and, and I've, <laughs> I've experienced that a lot. But, but, but again, this isn't just to uh, blow your your skirt up. It, it's it's a tool because when you when it's right on that system, it, it travels. You know, that, which is obviously the whole idea. But again, get, getting back to the audience here, uh, I don't want to turn this into a Phantom Focus commercial. Uh, try the Phantom, the uh, Null Positioning Ensemble. And, and, and check out the, uh, the, those tools on the Carl Tatz design uh, in the library under acoustic tools. And uh, try this at home and uh, let me know what you think. I, I get uh, responses from all over the country. People who will just do this simple thing because it seems so simple that people, I, I, I guess that people just think, well, yeah, well, I kind of do that. But you don't kind of, you have to do it exactly. Once you do it, it's like, you know what it's like if you're mixing a vocal and all of a sudden you just knock it down a half a dB and boom, there's the pocket. That's what this. That's what we're talking about here. So uh, I think that's you know, it. If, uh, if anyone, again, if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to contact me. I'd, I'd be happy to answer, answer any questions. I, I've got a couple of questions. Um, oh. I'll play audience for a little bit. So with this setup, um, and if we can get close to, to getting that, flattening that curve, how does that, uh, does it translate to kind of a new mixing spec, really, of like going down to portable devices? I mean, there are people that that's how they consume their music is just listening to it either on their directly from their iPad or their iPhone or, you know earbuds like i do and yeah. I just, have you talked to any of your engineer friends that are out there and how they how it translates it, it, has, it has to it's the same thing you know earbuds or, or laptops it, it's the same thing because you no longer have anything uh frequencies masking other frequencies so that's that's what allows you to play it louder than you normally would uh and and may, one of the most dramatic things that people point out to me is that you can turn it really low. I mean, as low as the pot on your console or your monitor controller it will go, and you can listen and you'll hear every single thing in the low end. Um, so what happens in a laptop or earbuds? Obviously, they only go so low. Right. Um, again, you're hearing the overtones, and you've already you've done it correctly. Um, you know, if a record is is mixed correctly, uh, even though you don't hear that low end you'll hear the overtones of the low end, and the octaves comes up. So, yeah, I mean, it works. It, it really doesn't matter what it's playing on. And that's good because, I mean, I that's where I struggle sometimes is you get something that sounds really great on your on your larger speakers or even, uh, you know, smaller, uh, like, aura tones and things like that. And then you go down tiny and you're like, oh, my gosh, this, like, it just sounds bad. Like, if the, if the 
vocals aren't aren't bright enough they'll just get buried and you know just there's just all these little different things and yeah. and actually uh, you know vocals are, are a good example because you hear some vocals that days gone by would sound great you try playing that now out of your phone and it just it sounds like it was this you know so uh, I mean, that's, that's an interesting point I remember there was a, a period, I can't remember, maybe it was in the 90s or 80s or 90s probably, where they used to bury vocals. You know, they'd put it, they wouldn't be out front. And right. I, I, hate, I hated that period because uh, you couldn't really, un, you know, just didn't sound like, a, for instance, a James Taylor record or something like that, you know, that, where that, but now I, I think everyone knows that the vocal is, it always was the most important thing. So, so that's probably what you're talking about is, those type of mixes, uh, again, when you use the null positioning ensemble, uh, that will help. Uh, you'll be able to tell whether the vocal is here in front of you, here, you know, two feet back. You know, it'll, it'll give you depth. That's a great point. The fact that, and that that's one of the things I remember the most about the Phantom Focus system. But, but is is you get depth you can hear into your mix and i'm a big proponent i mean i picked you know this the uh, i mix on some adams and i also mix on some tenoys and what i like about both those speakers is that you can literally like i remember the first time i hit i heard the demo um i just heard into the mix and there's this depth and then i so i thought i was like doing great and then i went and heard a system um that was calibrated proper like your phantom focus system and Man, it's just, it's super wide. Like you could almost see the reverb tails. It's just, th that depth is so important. And I, well, think I mean, a lot you bring up a good point. That. Like you mentioned two monitors. A lot of people will have, you know, two, three, four monitors and they're all wrong because you know, the room is king. Every one of them is wrong and you can still come up with your own, you know, protocol and, and your own system. Like, well, okay, well, I'm looking for this on this speaker, and if that sounds right on this speaker, and then I go to this one. You know, you can, you can just invent this whole crazy thing that works. You know, you can make it work. But when you have one system that's accurate, you don't need other ones. The only time uh, having another set of monitors makes sense, uh, and I, you know, I have a, a few people who do it. They'll put the speakers. I, t I tell them to put it on the side. Put the speakers on the side. Um, you don't want anything, there's so much we could talk about here. I, I'm not sure how we're doing time-wise. Um, we'll be wrapping it up soon. Okay. Uh, you don't want anything in between the speakers. It's, don't put your video monitor in between the speakers. Get a TV, put it on the wall. You just want that open, completely open. It makes a huge difference. Uh, I'm glad you made me think of that. Um, uh, just keep it open and ideally you don't want another set of monitors in between there either because that's the reason um, just put them on the side so the point is that when you're listening to phantom focus as you know or not even phantom focus just an opposition ensemble the speakers go away so if you want to hear what speakers sound like then put them over on the side of the room and then listen to the speakers um, if you feel like you need to uh, because you won't be listening to speakers in the null positioning ensemble. Um, wow, that's so great, great advice. Good point. I've I've learned so much in this uh, in this little time we've had together, Carl. Carl, I really appreciate it. Um, once pleasure. again, if, if they want to get get a hold of you, um, where can they get a hold of you? Uh, just CarlTatsDesign dot com or PhantomFocus dot com. Uh, all the contact. But PhantomFocus dot com is the uh, e-commerce site that has our own monitors, our subwoofers, consoles, uh, amplifiers, et cetera. Not our own amplifiers, but we sell uh, some amplifiers there. And uh, you can go to Carl Tatz Design from that website and vice versa. Uh, we've got a new website that's gonna come online, I don't know, hopefully in a couple of weeks. Um, but it, all the information is there on the existing, including all the studios, and uh, you can check that out. Um, so uh, let me know if I can help. And you know what? I'm going to give a plug for Phantom Focus since they're, it's really awesome. And the one thing is we did a roundtable of some Phantom Focus users from studios all across the U.S. And it's actually yeah. pretty oh. informative. Yeah. And you can hear it and it'll be up on your YouTube channel pretty soon, right? Uh, well, it's going to be, it's not going to be public first, but it will be, um, it'll go out to our mailing list so first. It'll be a press release and, and that should happen pretty soon. Uh, but that, that that's fun. And, and and we kind of talk about a lot of the same things um, there also. But uh, 
again, the things we talked about today, I'm just hoping that uh, some people will take advantage of those two things because they're it's it's a uh, it's part of what I call the, the rhythm section when we do a phantom focus system, because without that, you're polishing a turd. You know, it's not like you can just take a, some software and, and tune the thing and make, you know, disregard where the speakers are and everything. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a full two day installation for us, for us to do it. So, um, you know, take advantage of those things because they're super important to, to, to the setup. That's great. And you know Thank what? You, Michael. It takes work. That's what it comes down to. You got to spend the time to do it right, and it takes work, but the rewards are well worth it. It's well, easy and it's fun. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Carl. Learned a lot. And for myself, Mike Rodriguez, and Carl Tatz, thanks for listening. And uh, hopefully, we'll see you again next year. Hi, this is George Massenberg at Leapers Fork, Tennessee. Konnichiwa. Kalimera. Privet. Ciao. Tadahao. Hola. Can I? Bon dia. Test. Greetings. Hola. If you're not a member yet, I'd like to invite you to go to aes.org slash join and become a member today. An AES membership carries incredible value, talks with experts, networking opportunities, a wealth of knowledge in the e-library with papers dating back to the earliest days of AES. The AES Live videos with an extraordinary collection of educational videos from the most notable experts and on topics ranging from recording and production, EDM, forensic audio, hip hop and R&B, game audio, immersive audio, live sound, and so much more. And this is not even including access to all the events, conferences, conventions, symposia, institutes and academies. We have many great events coming up in 2021 and many opportunities to learn, connect and come together. So if you're not a member, join today. Come on, up again, come on. Come on, AES, on your feet. I think that the AES convention is probably the most important one in terms of uh, you know news, in terms of new technologies and stuff like that. Thank you so much.